Right, this is an analysis two lecture. It's been a hell of a long time since I've done a video, actually. I've just been busy this term. Uh, this one's on differentiation. It's going to go through questions that you will find on the exam. Uh, not these particular questions, but of a similar type. So, let's get going. Right, definitions as always. Right, this is very important for differentiation. The intermediate value theorem which states that for a function uh, for f of a less than alpha less than f of b there is a, exists a c as an element of uh, a, a, b, a, b, a to b such that f of c is alpha. So what this is basically saying is if you've got a graph then there'll be a value if, if, if there's a value between the two points then you'll find another value which fits there, which is perfectly usable. Uh, this is another very important one. We say a function is differentiable if uh, f of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And if th that exists everywhere, then it is differentiable. Uh, One-sided limits as well. This is the last topic, the last thing in this. Um, you may have touched on this in analysis one. This is that the limits from one side go to the limits from the other. Uh, here we just use the case zero. It might be another place where, such as one, where you have an unknown. It might not be included. So say so you'll know in a bit. Uh, then the two side limit exists and is differentiable at the point. Right. Uh, some more rules. You probably know these as well. Uh, if we have now a and b are just constants, so we have a f plus b g uh, differentiated with respect to x is a times the differentiation of f plus b times the differentiation of x uh, of g. So um, here's another one: f times g. This is just the the product rule. So we have a differentiation of f times g plus f times the differentiation of g and the final one is f over g and this is the chain rule is it i can't remember the words um which is uh, f of x time uh, differentiation times g minus f times differentiation of g divided by g squared right example uh, show that there. This is uh, one that's generally always on a past on a, a past paper that I found. Uh, show there exists an x as an element uh, between zero and pi, such that f of x equals zero, where f of x equals e to the x minus two minus sine x. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to use the intermediate value theorem, which is the thing we had on the first slide. Uh, we'll use it with these, these points we've got here on both sides. So 0, if we put in, input 0, f of 0 is e to the 0, minus 2, minus sine 0. And obviously this is 1, this is 0, so we have minus 1, which is less than 0, which is a bit obvious. But if we put in the value for pi, so we have e to the pi, minus 2, minus sine pi, then this gives us e to the pi, minus 2, which is bigger than 0 because e to the pi is greater than 2. And what this tells us is that over here, with 0, it's below the line, and with pi, it's above the line. So there must be a point at which uh, some x will actually be on the line. So that's proved. Uh, this is another example, a bit longer one. This one will always be on the exam as well, except for different examples. This is a bit more tricky one, so I chose this one, because it has a modulus in it. So that f of x is x times modulus of x is differentiable everywhere. Now to do this, first off we can take the case where uh, x is greater than 0. So if we use that, then we have, this is our function, remember, for different, if it's differentiable. It must exist everywhere, this part must exist everywhere. So this is our function. And we input the value, so if x is greater than 0, then that makes this x squared, yeah? So we'll have x plus h squared minus x squared over h. Yep. And if we expand this, 
you'll get this x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x. This x squared and this x squared cancel, which leaves us uh, 2xh plus h squared. Uh, the h will cancel there and there to leave 2x plus h. And uh, this is all as uh, h goes to 0, by the way. I'll just save room. Uh, so if h goes to 0, then we have 2x plus 0, which is 2x. So this is our, that, that's if x is greater than 0. Uh, we also need to do it if x is smaller than 0. So we do exactly the same. Because it's smaller than, uh, we have x times minus x. Yeah? Because we made it a modulus. Uh, yeah? Uh, so that, that gives us minus x squared, but instead of x we put x plus h, and over here we have minus minus x squared, which makes it a plus. Now again, if we just expand this, it's just the same, but we have negatives here, so we have uh, minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared plus x squared. These cancel, again, we have this h cancels, and one of these h's cancels as well, to give us minus 2x minus h, and this h goes to zero, minus 2x minus zero, is minus 2x. Now the only case we haven't considered yet is if x is equal to 0. Now in order to do this what we, what, what we know so far is that if it's greater than 0 it's got a different differentiation to whether it's less than 0. So we have to compute one-sided limits. I think that's what that says. Yeah. So the first one we've done uh, as h is going to 0 from the positive side we have 0 plus h minus f of, zip, that should be 0, sorry, over h is h squared over h, and as h goes to 0, then we get 0. The next side over there, that should be 0 again, sorry, uh, h going to 0 from the negative side, so we have 0 plus h minus f of 0. Remember, this is, because it's going from the negative side, it's x squared, uh, negative x squared, so it's doing the same before, but in place of um, x, we have 0, I divided by h, and this also goes to 0. So because the two one-sided limits coincide are the same, then it has a two-sided limit. So in conclusion, if x is greater than 0, f of x differentiated is 2x. If it's smaller than, then the derivative is minus 2x. If it's equal to 0, uh, at the point 0, which is because we've done there, then it's equal to 0. So the derivative is 2 times the modulus x, because we can just change that sign.